What's up YouTube? Just thought I'd throw out this video of uh, my new fish tank. It's uh, Aquion 29 High uh, with an Aquion 20 filter. It came, came with all the stuff. The, uh, the heater, um, which basically heats this to about 74 Fahrenheit. So it's not the strongest heater, not really the greatest, but I got some pretty hardy fish in here. Right now though, the reason I'm doing this video is because I'm just battling ick the other week. I went to the uh, to PetSmart to get uh, um, to pick up a clown pleco and checked him over. He seemed okay. Lo and behold, you know, a few days later. I noticed um, some white spots on uh, some of my platies that you see swimming here. I wasn't quite sure what that was. Uh, you know, I was checking the water parameters. They're a little bit off. So I thought, okay, you know, maybe I'll do a water change and, um, and, uh, and just see if that was kind of stress. Like sometimes fish can get like stress ick. And uh, anyway, yeah, I know uh, the spots just grew more and more. And I, then I actually saw the clown, the first few days, the clown pleco hid. Uh, he likes this little hiding place underneath uh, underneath this driftwood. There's like a little sort of cave part. So he's usually hidden upside down uh, there. And uh, But then I saw him sitting on top of the driftwood. And man, he was just covered in white spots. So I was like, man, I got to do something fast. I'm not really, you know, I, also I got some assassin snails and I got a hill stream loach in this tank. I also had two, uh, two, uh, um, uh, the, what is it called? Uh, powder blue garamis. Uh, they both died. Um, not cool. And, uh, this hill stream loach I was sort of worried about, but he's actually faring, faring pretty well. Uh, I didn't notice any white spots on him and uh, anyway so I had to kind of move quick because of this tank I can't really crank the temperature so the temperature is around 74 Fahrenheit and uh, the hill stream loach seems to be doing good he's kind of hanging up top there um, by uh, by the filter and that where there's more oxygenated water but he does come down I'd say his his behavior is fairly normal I haven't noticed anything different about him uh, obviously these are my assassin snails and man, I feel bad. I didn't want to have to do it with them in the tank, but unfortunately I, I, I you can't really move them. If you take them out of the tank and there's any sort of ick parasite on them, it won't affect them, but it will bring ick back into the tank. So it's, it's a real pain in the butt to treat ick, man. It's not fun. And I definitely will be looking at maybe a quarantine tank or or just buying from a way better like you know our local fish store they actually um oh there's the clown pleco right there coming out i'll try to not freak him out and zoom in yeah he's looking pretty good i don't really see too many white spots on him at all anymore oh, i see the odd one i should say i do see the odd one it shows up more on the black, but you know what? I'm still treating the tank. I hope I don't lose him. He was like literally the worst. And, uh, and he's gone. Uh, so this is day three of the treatment. And uh, what I had to use, we can't get X at Ick X here in Canada. I heard that's a really, really great, um, a really, really great treatment. Instead, what I'm using here is this. This is the API uh, Super Ick Cure. Treats white spot disease. Yeah, use at first signs. Add slimes coat to, for protection. Yeah, so this is a pretty good. Uh, so far, so good. I have noticed a huge difference. Uh, like I said, this is day three. I did the max dose. It says if you have um, snails or sensitive fish like maybe gourami or hill stream loach are supposed to be quite sensitive um, to only use half a dose it was so bad on that pleco I just decided I'm doing the full dose proper dosing I don't want to be battling this forever so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the best 
dose that I can give give them the full treatment just so I make sure that I don't I don't miss anything and uh, and I do it properly because man I'm telling you guys I do not want to be doing this again this is like not it's not the end of the world but it's not super fun either so um, it's hard on the fish and um, and it might even be hard on the plants here so I'm checking out this uh, I think it's called fire uh, sword or something like that and I got a new leaf kind of growing down there so I don't really want to wipe out my plant life either I got a lot of really cool plants in here um, they're all kind of beginner level plants I just have the gravel substrate with some root tabs I add a little bit of leaf zone every now and then for things like the java fern um, but uh, yeah so this is a fairly new tank this is three weeks so it's still I would say it's probably still cycling um, one of the things that I've used to to really help is a uh, Fritzime 7 you dose the tank with that and it, it's not like you're like good to go and you can just kind of set and forget you got to kind of monitor the water quality every day and uh, but yeah, as you can see, I still have all my fish living and the only issue I had was really with the ick and the garamis are, are way more sensitive to, to this stuff than, than these other guys. So I may lose the assassin snails. Unfortunately, when I got this, some of these plants, I rinsed them off, but you can never get everything. And I noticed I had some uh, a small like uh, snail infestation. So I'm not really sure what type. They might be pond snails. They might be... Uh, I, they were little tiny black dot snails, like little tiny ones. So, but man, those guys are fast. You see them scurrying along and that. So I've been trying to smush and kill as many as I can. Plus, um, plus I, got, I added three assassin snails to kind of help with a little bit of snail control. And um, yeah, so I'm not sure how all this is going to work out. There's look, this tank is quite chaotic right now. Um, I've been. Uh, uh, I've had some uh, high nitrate, or not sort of high nitrite, but my nitrites are, are around 20 ppm, which is kind of like a not good danger zone. Uh, so I've been, uh, but unfortunately with this medication that you can't really do a water change. So what I've been doing is dumping in um, Seachem Prime that will detoxify ammonia in nitrites. And I've added some more bacteria. I'm um, just like, there's a lot of stuff going on in this tank. I just need this to get through the the next couple days, I think, and um, and and it should be all good. As you can see, uh, the glue on the corners of the uh, aquarium, you can see it's blue. That is a side effect of uh, of this API Super Ick Cure. It it will stain uh, your aquarium blue. I recommend using gloves if you're gonna like administer this stuff. Um, and uh, and definitely don't get it in your eyes or on your on your hands or anything like that. But it is good. I had to remove um, my carbon filter from this uh, uh, from my filter setup. So I'm sure I've probably lost some beneficial bacteria from pulling that filter out. However, in behind that filter, I did put some uh, like a bag full of filter media. Uh, I did that right from the get-go, so I'm sure I had some beneficial bacteria growing in there, and that's probably kind of held the line a little bit. Also, uh, if you guys uh, have a filter like this and you do, didn't do this already, add a filter intake sponge. This one here is a Fluval Flex. I'll, I'm going to add stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll add uh, Amazon links to all this stuff in the description. But uh, yeah, I picked this up. It was like you know, I don't know, five or seven dollars on Amazon, and it will fit a twenty or thirty. So I put it on, it is uh, fine. So it's not a coarse sponge, so it is trapping lots of stuff. And uh, that's another place for beneficial bacteria uh, to live and grow. And um, anyway, uh, that is basically my, my only filtration system right now uh, in terms of mechanical filtration. Biological, like I say, uh, how this filter works, you have all of that blue. See in here, that's like, uh, all this blue is places where that uh, beneficial bacteria can live and you can't really see in the top, it's too dark and black in there, but I do have a filter bag full of, uh, full of, um, uh, I don't know, like these porous rocks or whatever. It's like matrix something or, I don't know if I have it down here or not. No, I don't, but 
Yeah, anyway, anytime you can add a little bit of extra biological filtration in, in your filter or whatever, it's always a good deal. I do have, um, uh, I do, I, so yeah, I just want to say, so I, I, in order to remove this chemical for the ick treatment, in order to remove the chemical uh, from this tank, I need to uh, replace my uh, carbon filter. Uh, so I went to the pet store and they're like, I don't know, 25 bucks or something like that for, I don't know, five or six pack, three pack. I can't remember what, but anyways, I'm not actually going to be doing that. What I did instead, I have this coarse, uh, filter sponge. I'm going to throw in there and, uh, and I do actually have a carbon bag, um, activated char, uh, carbon or charcoal or something like that. I can't remember what it is. But that's what I'm going to use instead. So it's way, way cheaper than, you know, spending 30 bucks on, on filter cartridges and stuff like that, that I'm not really convinced at a whole lot. These guys are doing just fine. The nitrites are a little bit high, but I don't, I, I feel like it's also kind of at that point in the cycle where you would see that the fish aren't, aren't behaving any differently. Um, I am monitoring the water uh, daily. There's no ammonia. Uh, in the water so I'm not concerned about that and uh, and it's just a matter of I got lots of plants going here I got a red Lud Ludwigia or Ludwigia Ludwigia I'll call it um, I got a couple Java fern uh, some nice Amazon sword and uh, this this must be like that fire sword or something like that money wart and I got a couple floaters up top frog bit and uh, that's it I tried to uh, hopefully this is and there's lots of growth you can see like on some of these plants in the background especially the red Ludwigia is doing really really well I don't have a special light this is just literally the light that came with uh, the top of the aquarium it's just your normal kind of LED it's not a high light high spectrum or anything crazy like that and you can see like I, I have nice red coloring in there as well which is kind of hard to achieve. It's a combination of light and uh, adding uh, iron to the water. So, which I do with that API leaf zone. And you can see here's my fire sword or whatever. It's looking really, really good. I got new growth coming up on that. That's perfect. Uh, like I said, th these these plants have been in this tank for three weeks. So they've I've in my other aquarium I had I did nothing. I just threw them in the gravel substrate with. Uh, there's a there's a bed of fish and and some uh, I forget what else is up there some amber tetras you know loach and stuff like that and we had a major like algae outbreak it was my kid's tank he had the lights on for like 12 to 14 hours a day and uh, so it's kind of like lesson learned with this tank I put it, uh, my lights on a timer I usually do between six to eight hours um, now I'm at eight hours. Uh, I haven't had any algae issues whatsoever and uh, uh, I'll tell you a couple reasons why. Number one, I was controlling the light from the get-go. Number two, I have four platies, two gold uh, twin bar platies and, and two of the neon blues, I think. And man, you see them over there. What's this guy doing? He's, he's chomping at platies or non-stop eaters and I never knew this. But they're actually really great for algae control. They're uh, omnivores, so they will eat algae as well. And I've never really had any issues with algae. These guys go to town on my plants. I'm feeding them sparsely. Um, I usually feed them, I was feeding them kind of like a little smidge every day. Um, not Try not to overfeed. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so... That, that that's what's up um, those guys were a huge help my next big thing is uh, I have a, one hill stream loach I'd like to get a couple more because these guys are the coolest things ever um, I'm not sure I, I, I saw in, on some YouTube videos that the hill stream loach will eat algae uh, I'm not really sure if that is totally totally true uh, when I got this from my uh, local fish store uh, they mentioned uh, they're feeding it like uh, shrink, uh, shrimp uh, pellets or, or wafers and stuff like that. Basically, uh, a more meatier diet. And on their on their tank at the store, it says do not feed or it says no algae wafers. 
So I've been feeding uh, uh, a meat-heavy diet to him. Uh, and uh, it is a male because you can tell he has the shoulders there. His head's pointing out with some shoulders. And, uh, and I have a clown pleco. So I do not foresee having any issues with algae in this tank. Um, I think I got enough things in here that <laughs> that will munch the algae that this shouldn't be a problem plus I got a lot I got a fairly it's not super heavily planted but I would say this is a, a pretty good amount of plants you know it's going to be using a lot of nutrients from the water column you know the Amazon swords are going to be feeding a lot from the substrate and that so so this is pretty good and like I said this is a three week old tank so it's still kind of going through it's um uh, what's it called? It's still kind of going through the cycle, uh, but so far so good. Um, and uh, and you know what? I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, I think tomorrow is the last day of treatment. I might extend it because my water temperature is low. I might do another half round. So I might, you know, do a 50% water change tomorrow, add in more of that um, super it cure just to really make sure I tamp this down and I get rid of it because I do not want to... I do not want this coming back. I want to finish the cycle and I want to add add uh, a couple more, uh, some more fish. We're looking at some uh, Celestial Pearl Danios and maybe a couple more of these uh, Hillstream Loaches. I'm not sure. Um, anyways, that's it. Uh, I'll throw some links in the description below for you know all the filter and the it cure and all that. It, it, it really does seem to be working. I had it all over to Platy's. They had their little tail fins clamped down which is like a sure sign of like uh, stress and infection it was all covered in ick it was i felt so bad for these little guys but uh anyway it's all good now and uh and hopefully uh hopefully my next post will be uh will be a much better one take care